What's going on, YouTube? You here with old Jonesville Dirty. I'm here with Mr. E, the man himself. You know what I'm saying? Me and Edwin got to know each other. He's actually on the number one fleet here at Prime. <laughs> we're we're, yes, we're both on the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and correct. Edwin does PSD and TNT. And TNT, correct. But we're going to get to his story. His story, yeah, a touch <laughs> just a touch later, but it's very interesting. Great guy. I'll give you a tidbit of it before we talk about truck stuff. He does officiating with boxing. Amateur boxing. I've been doing officiating nationally, internationally for a very long time. So cool. So what got you into truck driving? So a friend, my buddy of mine, he had a hot shot business. Okay. And he asked me to come work with him. So I did hot shot. So I got what it was called the baby CDL. The baby CDL is so that you could haul over 26,000 pounds, but I was using a dually. So I didn't have to have air brakes. And um, of course I didn't have to have stick. Yeah. So um, I pulled a very long raggedy looking trailer. Yeah. But inside it was Bentley's. Inside of it was Tesla's. Oh, right. Yeah, and those, exactly. those nice cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So super expensive. So it, it was nice. I mean, it was OK. I mean, it was pretty neat. But I think that's a, a younger man's game because you have to climb in and out of the car. You have oh. to take your belt off. You have to climb through the windshield because you're in an enclosed trailer. You're doing gymnastics. <laughs> you, have to get, you have to get up against the side of the thing and get out of it, you know. And then, of course, it's not as nice of, as the equipment Prime has. You're sleeping in the back seat of a Dodge Ram yeah. as best as you can. And trying to get a good night so you can yeah. drive the next day. Yeah, so that, that, that didn't work. So when I when it was time that I wanted to get to the big boy CDO, yeah. it was no brainer. You do all your research all you want. You can look at all the companies you want, but in the end, Prime's gonna win. You're gonna see it in the people that, the way they interact. You're gonna see it in the equipment. You're gonna see them on the road. You're gonna see it on the YouTube channels. It's just a cut above the rest. We are. No doubt. Mm -hmm. So, and your fleet manager, let's get to him. Yeah. What so, kind of guy is he? Oh, he's really cool. Um, um, what was funny is since I came to prime with my, with my CDO, which I don't recommend, I don't recommend you guys do that. I did it. What I ended up doing is I went to one of these places called get your CDL quick, walk in on Monday, leave Friday. And that was it. The only time I touched the truck was a couple of hours beforehand. And the morning of the test, the dude's wife took me around the course <laughs> and uh, said, okay, let's do it again, right? So no training whatsoever. They did do a good job with the pre-trip, right? But I came to Prime because I knew that I could not go on the road, even though I had a CDL. Yeah. I, I wasn't a professional. I, I spoke to one recruiter from another company, and they said, yeah, two weeks, and you can have your own key. Two weeks? Two weeks, I was still learning about trailer wide and don't hit this and don't oh, hit yeah. that and be careful. So there was just no way, absolutely no way that I was ready. So when I came to Prime, it was the 50,000 mile program, yeah. right? And so when I when I did the PSD phase, the fleet manager called and talked to my PSD trainer and said, hey, tell me about him. And said, oh yeah, he's a good guy. You want him on your team. Yeah. He's going to be safe. He's not going to, you know, he's, I have something that's called figure it out gene i don't bother too too many people i figure it out that's you know? such common sense yeah uh, here's a good example during tnt i grabbed the owner's manual of the freight liner and i read it okay no big kind of boring help me sleep right now i'm by myself and i'm in north carolina and i'm at a, a port place i drop off the trailer they told me to go park in the bobtails i park in the bobtails a couple hours later they call me and said come on i go to come on and my wheels are spinning I can't get out the dirt, right? Yeah. But I remember reading the owner's manual. I hit that button. Whoop, I got right out. Fast, differential. fast forward two years later, I'm at just a few months ago. I'm in that same place. I'm walking, trying to stretch out, go for a little walk. And I see a brand new prime driver. Same spot. I knew what, I knew what the problem was. I yeah. walked up to him. He goes, I cannot get out. I cannot get out. So I jumped up and I was like, push that button. I said, now give out. He goes, oh, thank you. I said, you didn't read your owner's manual? <laughs> I mean, and I said that on previous videos. Mm -hmm. The one thing you have to do uh -huh. is not just jump in the truck. Right. Read your manual. You read it for your phones. You read it for your, yep. for your utilities at your house mm -hmm. and things like that. Read the damn manual. So what I did was, for the entire first year I drove the Prime, I never spoke to my fleet manager on the phone. Didn't have to. Yeah. Clear, communication, polite. 
even to this day when I reach out to him for anything, I'll say good morning and I'll say his name, good morning. And then I'll say, hey, I need this or I need that. So in other words, you came out here as an adult, yeah. you carried mm -hmm. yourself as an adult. Yeah. That's And that's a right. fantastic way for any potential students or mm -hmm. potential drivers coming in. That's all we care about. Be an adult about how you handle things. How you handle There's it. Some things you're going to have to figure out. It's okay to ask questions, mm -hmm. but ask it after you at least attempt it. Try it. Learn it. I, YouTube has been a big help to me. Uh, one time I had a, a, a reefer code and I Googled it and I saw the reefer. I saw another prime driver's uh, video, video yeah. and they pointed out. It, what, what it was for me, it was the uh, coolant and the reefer. Okay. I had no clue, one, that it had a coolant, and two, where it was at. Oh, so yeah. in that video, the guy goes, it's up there. All the way up there. And I looked up there, I was like, holy smoke, it's up there. So yeah. I went to the Flying J, sweet talk the lady in there. She gave me the ladder, and I ran out <laughs> with a big old ladder, climbed up top, put some coolant, took care of it. And, that, right? and see, mm -hmm. ingenuity. Right. right, just look it up, try so, to figure it out. And your and your ingenuity and I, your attention to detail could be accredited to being an officiating with the boxing trials. So, so before I came to Prime, I was a high school teacher. Okay. I used to teach tenth grade world history, so I'm used to dealing with 140, 15 year olds all day, right? So it was a pleasure coming to Prime and being by yourself on the truck for a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's but, like you're dealing with those students. But one of the things, <laughs> one of the things I've learned as a boxing official is no matter what happens, you're in control. Yeah. You have to portray that you're in control. Even if you're not in control, even if you don't know what to do next, stay calm Pause, stay cool. and they think, you know, you're in control. Right. And, and I think it's, it, it works for me here because it, I do things a certain way. I couple to the truck from front to back. I decouple from back to front. I just do it every single time and I don't miss anything in between. Get rid of it. Right, and so I tell my students, hey, when you're with me, this is the way we're going to do it. After you get on your own truck, you can do it your own way. Yeah. But this is the way to do it. This is the way I do it. And I try to teach them. Don't, I, don't, I just don't teach them what they need to know for their CDL. I try to teach them to get ready for the next step. Yeah. So when they jump on their TNT trainer's truck, they know how to fuel. They know how to couple. They know how to trip plan. Right? Yeah. And just teach them. Just show and I think that's Especially good. if they're thirsty for the knowledge. Mm -hmm. If they're that's showing the great. initiative. I, I've had... 14 students out of 14 students i had one one student that just did not go above and beyond didn't bother to learn just rather lay in the bunk didn't want to and those are the ones mm -hmm. that you look at and just yeah. think to yourself like good luck yeah. yeah i mean you get we have a job mm -hmm. and so if you're showing the initiative i definitely want to give it to you but if you're not yeah i'm still gonna do my job I'm they told me to get you a license that's all i can do yeah and a big thing with me is I help mine after they get off of like TNT because you do both PSD and TNT. Right. I do. I do TNT. I, I let my fleet manager know that I prefer to come in as a pinch hitter. Yeah. In other words, if there's conflict between the TNT trainer and the student and they need me to come in, I'll come in to pick up the student and try to finish them out. And you had a, you did a great job with my boy Jamal. Jamal. Yeah, you did Jamal, a great though, job with really him. Good. Uh, she I, was impressed. I, I named his truck. I hope he remembers. I <laughs> named it Le Jean Blue. <laughs> Le Jean Blue? It's Haitian for blue money. And that's what he going to make. Yeah. A lot of great yeah. kid. Yeah, he had a good business. I can't believe how sharp he was business-wise at such a young age. And Yeah. I wish I, wish. 23. I wish I was that smart at 23. So, yeah, he's <laughs> definitely a great kid. Yeah. Um, So, let's get to the boxing because you boxing. can avoid me on that. Okay. And... So, You've done Olympic trials. I've done. I just did the Olympic trials here for the ones in Tokyo. So that was very nerve wracking because you want to. It doesn't matter to me, red or blue, but I know the minute they announce the decision, some guy's celebrating or some girl celebrating, and the other one starts bawling, and I want to start crying too because you know, <laughs> I, I I love the sport and I love the competition of the sport. I love the fact that you can talk trash all you want, but just before we ring, just before that bell rings, boom. You are there by yourself, yeah. looking at each other. So I've done it. I, I was in Santa. I was in Austin, Texas, at a show, a boxing show, and they said, "Hey, if you're interested in becoming an official, come on down." I gave my name, went to class. Now the class is online, right? Yeah. And then it was on the job training. After that, you learn. You shadow people. You learn. You start learning real scoring, not this stuff that they that people argue about online. I'm talking when you're a judge and you're scoring, you are scoring every minute of every round. 
right? And people at home go, oh, the judges don't know what they're looking at. Um, no, you don't look like you don't look. <laughs> because why? Because at home, you turn, you grab a drink, you grab some food, you tell some jokes. You didn't yeah. even see those punches land. Yeah. And you come back and go, oh, that guy's winning. No, we're not. You didn't see the other guy land. You yeah. only seen your man land. That's so, it. And yeah, so it's, it's really good. Because you're impartial. You're yeah. very impartial to it. We, so. Yeah, we don't care. We look. I just try to focus, focus, and I try to lock in on those gloves and I'm just watching where the glove is landing and does it have the impact of the shoulder then doing this little jabby thing. Yeah. Right. And I'm looking at the combos. So the scoring criteria is number of quality blows on the target. The target area, number of quality blows. 99% of the time that's all you need. The second thing is dominance of the bout, right? Dominance of the bout, uh technical and technical advantage. You can be going back like Mayweather does and keep hitting and keep moving back. Doesn't yeah. mean you're losing. You know? Yeah, you just yeah. And then, of course, the competitors of the bout. So you want number, quality, bowls, dominance, and then uh, the competitor of the bout. I don't really need competitiveness. It's usually that first one. Yeah. And then I, well, as soon as the bout is over, 10-9 or 10-8 or 10-7, yeah. most of the time it's 10-9. You can get a 10-8 in there, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you, so you actually probably ref some guys that's actually out that's on the bigger circuit like WBA yes. guys I remember before they got there. Yeah, I remember I did George Foreman's son. Okay. I was in the ring with him and boy he had these massive meat hooks. Like his dad. Lift his hand up, you like you can barely lift his hands up. Um I did uh Othea Jones. Uh she won the bronze medal in Tokyo. Okay. So that was kinda neat. Um and then I've judged like Shane Mosley's kid when he was coming up. Okay. So was, you know, you so you get you get to see him. Uh, you see a lot of Fernando Vargas and his team. Yeah. He's he's very active with his young boxers, um, and and so it's, it's neat to see them all out there, competing. Um, you see the different levels of competition. Um, I went to Bulgaria with Team USA, and in Bulgaria it was kind of weird because yeah, I don't speak their language. Yeah. So you have Italy. Russia, Ukraine, um, India, you had all these countries there. Yeah. So I didn't, I never officiated USA bouts, but I could do India versus France. Yeah. Or I could do, you know, Kosovo versus Italy. So it's kind of neat. Can't speak the language. You're just using your hand signals. And you say box, break, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And they understand when you're giving them a count. So, mm -hmm. and so we're doing that because you're still active in it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you said you're going to yeah. do something later on this month. Yeah. Well, next month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so here's the big thing with people say company lease and all of that. Right. Um, how does that actually go about? Because there's the conception that company guys, we can't take off. We can't, we don't get time right. off. But these things, these events sometimes take. Maybe a week or so. A week or so, or absolutely, yeah. So how do you fit that into being a company? So number one, you gotta earn, you gotta earn it with your fleet manager. How you run efficiently, are you a pain in the keister? Are you complaining? Are you out there getting it? You out do there your getting damn it. job. Do your job. It doesn't matter. I don't sit there and complain to him. I just do it. I just yeah. do it. There's things that you have to understand the fleet manager is in control of, and there's things that the fleet manager is not in control of. There's you know, the fleet manager takes nothing personal with you. They no. have about 80 trucks, and you're like, he has it in for me. No, he don't. It takes more work for him <laughs> to go and do something against you than it is to help you. They are your partner, whether you're lease purchase, lease, or company. They are your partner. You guys are working together and communicating. I've always been professional with him. Um, in my messages, every single message is, is, is polite. Every single message is clear. I don't waste his time with a, with a message this long. Clear and decisive. For these events that I know I'm going to be gone 7, 10 days, I communicate as soon as I'm invited. I tell them, hey, I received an invitation to go work Pueblo, Colorado, Team USA versus the world. So that means that the number one and two ranked amateur in the country is going up against their rank. So yeah. I'm excited because I want I've never really got to work team team China and they're coming. Okay. You know? Um and a couple of years ago I got to go to the Olympic Training Center and and do something called the Americas which is all the countries of South, Central, yeah. Canada, USA. They were all competing. So that was pretty awesome to see everyone in their uniform, cheering in different languages. And he's okay with you being off this Yeah, because well, I let him I let him know early. I let him know, okay, listen, you got to be considerate, right? Cause you, and you're you a know, good worker. So. Right. Like, if I know I'm going to take 10 days off, I might not take a day off this month, right? Because I'm, I'm going to be taking 10 days off. I can tell you right now, I've never, ever, 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 ever in my life taken a vacation. 
ever. Uh, usually when I go, I go volunteer somewhere, right? Um, in, Ju in June of 2016, I went to Ethiopia for okay. a week, and I got to play with kids for a week. For a week, I got to goof off and play yeah. off. To me, people call that, I just, I just enjoy it. I, just, I cannot see laying around doing nothing for a week. Yeah. I can't do it. No, I definitely, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. definitely, on behalf yeah. of the fleet and the unapologetic instructors, <laughs> right. I know you've been doing a great job. I've Thank been you. eyeballing you for some time. I mean, since the time I met you, right. I think yeah, I yeah, know yeah. you've done fantastic. Yeah. And you're going to do nothing but more great things mm -hmm. about you. So for on behalf of the unapologetic instructors, I would love to, t to tell you thank you. All right, appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You got Jonesville dirty. We up out of here, baby. Thank you.